Overflow Beyond the Music is a podcast hosted by musician and pastor Josh McCabe and takes a deep dive into the life of artists into topics of faith, family, and seasons of struggle. This podcast is presented by Overflow Ministries Group. For more information about Overflow Ministries Group, visit overflowgroup.org. And for more information about our host, his music project Caves, and much more, visit overflowbtm.com. Now here's our host, Josh McCabe, with today's episode. All right, all right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Overflow Beyond the Music. We're here for a very, very special Christmas episode. I hope you're all ready for Christmas. Just a couple days away right now, and I'm telling you, I'm excited. We're up here in Canada. It's snowy. That's where we live now. I think I told you that in the last podcast, but um, I definitely am, am hoping for a little bit of a white Christmas, and then let's just get the snow out of here, and let's get back to spring, because I want to be outside again. But I'm thankful for you guys uh, hanging out and tuning in for this episode. And I'm also really thankful to have a repeat guest back again. We have Paul and Hannah McClure that are going to be on this episode. And they just released a really awesome Christmas record. I typically am not a huge fan of Christmas records, but this one I absolutely love. I think it's really creative. I think the songs on it are amazing. I also think Paul and Hannah are just a great guests. Uh, they're an awesome couple. They really go deep. We had some fun on this episode, though, so we, we had a little bit of uh, some fun Christmas talk, so I think you'll really, really enjoy it. Before we dive into this episode, this week, this month, uh, this bi-weekly whatever we're doing right now, uh, I'd love to give a huge shout-out to Overflow Ministries Group. Um, they've really caught the vision of this podcast, gotten behind it, equipped it, and made it so all of you guys can hear it. And, uh, man, I'm just so thankful for them, so it's great to, they're a great team to be part of. And really grateful for Kevin and Jeff and Jackie over there. So huge shout out to them. Merry Christmas to you guys. And thank you for really catching the vision of this podcast. And if you want to know more about Overflow Ministries Group, it's more than just a podcast. It's it's a ministry. It's a vision. And they're changing lives all around the world. They're doing a lot of cool stuff with technology. And I think it'll really excite you. So check out overflowministriesgroup.org for more information about that. You can follow us online for the podcast at Overflow BTM on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Please, please, please reach out and say hello there. I would love to hear from you. Also would love to hear about um, any ideas for guests that you have that you would love to see on the podcast. I'd love to make that happen. So make sure you follow us online at Overflow BTM or just go to overflowbtm.com for the complete list of episodes and resources right there. So without any further delay, this is Paul and Hannah McClure of Bethel Music right here on Overflow Beyond the Music. It's, it's such a weird balance, um, and like, we'll just kind of start the interview here, but like, it's always such a weird balance when you're interviewing because you, you do want hot takes. Like, you want, it's like sports radio, like, you want, you want someone to say that Tom Brady's the most overrated quarterback of all time, right. like, you, right. or like, such and such worship leader is the most overrated songwriter of all time, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. right. You want that stuff because it's fun, but like at the same time, that's we want everyone to feel safe. But welcome back to the podcast, guys. It's good to have you on. Thanks, Thanks. for having us back, man. Yeah, you guys. Um, so uh, I'm assuming you're in Redding, California right now. Mm-hmm. Sunny 66 Redding. It's the dream. Okay, well, I'm going to hold this up oh. and let you see outside oh, here. Uh, no, no. Um, yeah, me and my family, we just moved back to Toronto, Canada. And, uh, wow. It's cold. Um, man. Oh man, I wish I was in Nashville right now. I'd be golfing <laughs> and all this stuff. But what what have you guys been up to lately? I mean, you just released a new Christmas record. Um, we're as we're listening to this right now. We're a couple days before Christmas, but like, what has been going on in your in your lives? I mean, I, I feel like I'm always like, what have you been doing during the big right. life shutdown? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's been going on for you two? It's been, I mean, it's kind of like everyone, you say like, it's been a really wild year and everyone's like, yeah, same. Like Mm -hmm. it's been wild for everyone. 
I mean, we were we started the year we were going to do this huge tour with Big Daddy Weave, which we actually did. We did 15 dates of that. It was supposed to be 45 dates. Mm -hmm. We were in Gee. like Connecticut when they were like, "Well, COVID, we'll shut down the next leg." You know, 15 days to slow the spread. <laughs> So we went home and then they were like, yeah, we're not doing anymore. So that was like a beginning of the year for us. And then since then, we've just been pretty much been home, mm -hmm. which has been kind of nice and also weird because, <laughs> I mean, normally yeah. we would be traveling at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. <laughs> and we just have not done a trip since March. Yeah. So we've just been home. Yeah, it's really weird. We um, back in... Let's see, July, we got pregnant. And then wow. in um, September, we had to go in for, I was miscarrying. So I had to go in for a DNC wow. surgery for that, um, which went terribly wrong. <laughs> As it would in a 2020 year. <laughs> I know, just classic 2020. So ended up having to get a blood transfusion and staying oh in the goodness. hospital for a few days. Um, so it's just kind of classic 2020, what could go wrong, went wrong. Went wrong. It was really strange. Yeah. So that, that's been a, I mean, that took up, it's been like six months, like that whole process yeah, took so up long. a really big chunk of our year. Yeah. Um, yeah. but luckily we, we were in the process of writing for this Christmas album because it felt like a really good thing to get us back, back on track, just like a good fun project to work on after so much um just thinking about the miscarriage and right just, yeah yeah just kind of a wild year but so that's been a big chunk of it yeah the album was like a nice it was good for both of us yeah like to distract and to have something to work on after a very traumatic mm -hmm. hospital stay for both mm -hmm. of us so but since yeah. i mean we did that in we did that in like September, October, mm -hmm. and then November's been pretty chill. It's been, I mean, it's been nice to just be home and had a good Thanksgiving. Yeah. And now we're home the rest of the year, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I had no idea of that, of that part of your story. And, um, you know, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, what it's, what it's like to get up there and, and sing after. You know, like we, we sing, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Right. But like when you're mm -hmm. actually in it, it's like a different tension. Yeah. It's easy to sing. It's easy to sing like before it and maybe after healing. Right. But yeah. how do you sing in the middle of it? That's a good, that's a good question. Yeah. There was one Sunday that is still hard for me to listen back to because yeah. we, mm. it was kind of like a couple days after I knew that I was miscarrying and um, wow. we were, we were supposed to lead that Sunday morning. Um, and Paul was like, you don't have to, you don't have to lead. Like I'll just do it or, or I'll find someone else. But I felt like mm -hmm. I was supposed to, and kind of like what you're saying, this is my opportunity to kind of do what we always talk about to sing in the middle of the storm. Right. And I felt like I was supposed to sing um, the more I seek you. Um, so yeah. I did that and I still, it's still really hard for me. I, if I watch it back, I just cry the whole time. Yeah. Um, but it's, I don't know. I don't, I didn't necessarily feel like doing it. I just, I just knew it was an opportunity that I wouldn't have again. Yeah. Um, and even, mm -hmm. even the Christmas project was very healing for my heart just to, I don't know, it lifted my eyes back up, I think, cause yeah. You know, for months it'd been me processing either, you know, the baby or myself physically recovering. Right. So right. I felt like it, w it was amazing to sing songs about Christmas, sing songs about the birth of Jesus, because mm -hmm. it helped me help lift my eyes back up to, to the King. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I, I'm so, thank you for sharing that. Thanks for being so vulnerable. I know. Um, that's, that's a tough thing to share about. It's even tough as a, as a male to even talk about it and ask questions about it. Cause I'm kind of like, I, I, so, I can't put myself there. And, and, uh, I, I've always appreciated that about you guys, um, just being vulnerable and real about your story. And, and I think it's part of the culture of the Bethel music team, to be honest and vulnerable and real and, and put yourselves yeah. out there and keep believing God for greater things. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. I, I want to I wanna ask you a question that, that's a little funny, but, you know, can maybe you can just echo how I'm feeling on this because it's Christmas season right now. As you're getting ready to lead worship, there is this pressure to lead Christmas carols. Can we talk about how freaking hard Christmas carols <laughs> are to lead worship and do well? Like, can we just talk about that for a second? So, so hard. Real. So real. We were laughing earlier remembering when we first took over – as worship pastors in North Carolina, this church, her brother, our brother-in-law was the pastor. He had just taken over as pastor. We're worship pastors. And we did the Christmas Eve service. And afterwards we were like, what just happened? That was so (laughs) terrifying. And why are there so many chords on every freaking song? Like every phrase is a new chord and it's a seventh chord or diminished. It's like, yeah, bro. You got to hire like a jazz piano player, just like a virtuoso guy. And then just let him, just, like, or just tracks. Right, whatever. exactly. Like the amount of times I sang like the glue, like just holding <laughs> the one chord. <laughs> it's like an auto it's like an auto-tune uh nightmare for the uh broadcast right. guy. Right. <laughs> um sorry, gear nerdy gear talk. But you know, tell me about the making of this record because I, I I love that video. It's just so um I believe it was was it Oh Holy Night? Um, but you were leading at Hannah and uh it was just like this room was just so it was breathtaking. Mm-hmm. Like and it just you're kind of wondering like, okay, when does like the big like thing keep but the more it went on, like the more tension I kept feeling in the song and just letting the vocals, it, like tell me a little bit about how you decided to approach that song with such warmth, passion, but yet like tension yeah. of intensity. Yeah, <clears throat> that's a good question. I mean, that song is, it's kind of a bummer we only get to sing that song during Christmas because it's like, I what love, a freaking yeah. song, what a worship song, what li- like yeah. the lyrics are so powerful. Christ is the Lord, praise his name forever. Like, doesn't yeah. get much better than that. So good. Matt Ogden and David Whitworth produced it, and that, like, the the production on that was mainly Matt. And he's just a, a genius. And he was like, mm-hmm. this is, like, my life's goal is to do an <laughs> all-holy all night that. rendition. But even, like, you know, the worshipful part of that song, and then we added, like, a little, like, praise his holy name kind of taggy part. <laughs> and it was just trying yeah. to create... Again, like you said, like more of that tension and then to release somewhat. I mean, it's still like very dark chords, Mm -hmm. but to release into that huge Christ as the Lord. Like Mm -hmm. having the community there singing it with us, having the arrangement Mm -hmm. like it was, the production. Hannah's voice on that is so good. Yeah, it was was a lot of fun. Yeah, I feel like it doesn't take much with that song because the words are so powerful. But yeah, it almost, I think we kind of, or at least me vocally, made the decision to like refrain um restrain or restrain (laughs) (laughs) Refrain. Refrain. yeah to restrain or just hold back a little bit until the end because you do want to sing it especially the second verse it's so beautiful but we kind of decided to like just hold back and let it simmer a little bit um yeah but yeah i just think in general that song is very anointed and very worshipful and it so it just makes it easy to sing well, I was going to say, like, it's it, Christmas carols in general are, they're not made for average singers. Like, <laughs> if you don't have a range, like, you're, you're done. Yeah, yeah. And, and, like, you know, you know, those times where you start panicking because you start singing, like, oh, and you're like kind of starting there. And then it gets the chorus, like, oh, crap. No. I should have oh. bumped this down three keys. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. no, what are we going to do yeah. here? Like, how did you guys, you know, what's the process like of figuring out? how you're going to sing them, how you're going to adapt uh, musicality, your voices yeah. uh, to, to pull off these, you know, songs that, that, I mean, I'm mostly talking about Christmas carols in general, but there's a lot of non-Christmas carols on the record and we'll talk about that in a minute. Sure. But, but how do you sort of pick yeah. those or figure that out? I think for me, I always think of it as like a reverse process. So I'm like the best part of this song Christ is the praise never that note right there is like the song. So I'm like, okay, right. where can you hit that? 
And then you just reverse it and you're like, well, maybe, I mean, I know when I lead Christmas carols, I'm like so low in the verses because I know there's a part that's going to come that's so high. So <laughs> you kind of have to like pick your battle of like, do I want to sound like I can barely get this out in the verse because I want the yeah. epic part of the song to, to rule, you know? What was cool about too is like, as I was looking through all the uh, credits on the record, Joel Taylor and Tony Wood were pretty hands on. Uh, I mean, Joel's, Joel's the CEO, or CEO the, or the head of Bethel Music. Yeah, he's, he's, the, he's the boss. That's who Joel is. <laughs> and so what, you know, he's been part of some songs, but it's not, it's not often you see him with more than two credits on a record or something like yeah. that. But what was the process like to bring him in on this? And why did that feel like a good fit for this particular record? Yeah. That's a good I, question. I think in general, we work well with Joel yeah. songwriting. Yeah. Um, where we always have ideas and like a solid start, but he's really good at bringing it all together. Yeah, very good. He has such a different perspective than we do as, as a, you know, head of a company of like what works in general, just an overall mm-hmm. vision of what right. will do well, what will work. Um, so it's just a good blend for us, I yeah. think. Even this, like when we had started out, we were thinking we would do like, Five, you know, six songs, we would do four or five covers and then an original maybe. And he heard right. all our songs we had started writing and was like, hey, let's just do like the opposite. Let's do mainly originals and then do a cover. And we were like, I mean, we were obviously into that idea. But Joel, yeah, like Hannah said, like he did it, he did it a lot on our last record as well. Like he's just so good once you have the song pretty much there. Get it. Of he like, gets it across yeah, the finish He's line. a great finisher. He's mm-hmm. like, hey, it really needs this. Or hey, he's really good at editing. So he'll take out yeah. a lot of our songs <laughs> yeah. in the best way. And at the time, <laughs> you're like, I hate this idea. This is a dumb idea. But then you hear it back and you're like, I'm really glad. Yeah. Like even the Heart Sings Hallelujah, that song, I was listening yeah. to it today because I was trying to figure out how it went for a tutorial. And I was like, <laughs> I was like the bridge on that. That was Joel's idea. And I'm like, I really like that. Mm-hmm. And that was a great idea. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was it was cool working with him. And then Tony Wood, we've written a ton of songs with Tony over Tony. the last four or five years. And he's just, he's such a legend. He's such a good songwriter. He's like our second dad. He's just the <laughs> sweetest guy ever and a lyrical genius. Yeah. When it comes to songwriting, I mean, there's there's some people you get in a room with and you get to get to write a song. And like my my dream is to still like I almost like want to get in a write with like three other people, just like Matt Redman, Martin Smith, like get them all Darlene check. And I just want to watch them. Same. I just want to watch them do Same. it. Like I don't even need to be involved. <laughs> Me I just want to watch it. <laughs> Um, but who is like a writer that when you write with them, because some writers will just like, you'll spend two hours just praying and prophesying over each other and 30 minutes writing a song. Right. And other people just pick apart every aspect. What is a writing experience you can think back to that left you guys challenged, encouraged? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah tell me a little bit about <laughs> That's that. so good. Can you think of one? Um, well, I mean, High King of Heaven was a, true. a very great, like, it was just Paul and Tony Wood for that one. Yeah, Tony Tony came with that idea for the High King of Heaven. He had he had a verse idea, and he wanted to put it to the tune of Be Thou My Vision. And when he read the, when he, like, Tony's like, I don't know how Tony is, but he's just got this great <laughs> voice. And he read the lyrics, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I was like... It was just one of those moments where, you know, where like a co-writer will have an idea. Sometimes yeah. you're like, yeah, let's try that <laughs> out. That sounds <laughs> fun. But this was one of those like, oh man, I cannot wait to write to this. Because it just inspired, I'm a melody person. So it inspired me to mm-hmm. sing a soaring, haunting melody for the chorus. But mm-hmm. he had these just poignant, just beautiful mm-hmm. lyrics for the verse. So that was that was very inspiring. And you finished it in like... Yeah, that was a fast An hour. Or Just two. again, because it was so inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, Joel. Joel's more of the like. He picks apart every part of the song, yeah. and it's like this funny thing. Joel will like read your lyrics, kind of like he's reading the newspaper, just to see if it makes sense. And you're always <laughs> like, "Well, you're right. This sucks. I hate this idea." <laughs> Jesus, we love you. Oh how. <laughs> oh how we, we love you. <laughs> Love you. You are the one. <laughs> yeah. Our hearts. Are, I know. And the slower he reads it, the more panicking you're, you're probably like, getting in your yeah. mind. Like, oh, this no. Sucks. This isn't good. 
Can you tell me of an idea or a time that you maybe had a song that you're like you're like stoked on it, and then you're you're going through it, and you realize why did that was the worst yeah. idea I've ever had? Do you have That's, one? That happens to me more with voice memos. Yes. Like I'm always recording voice memos, and I'll listen back and be like, "What in the like? That's not even a." Yes. What was what, what happened? What that's terrible. Yeah, it's less less co-writing. I think there's something that great that happens when you're with another person, but when you're by yourself, mm. yeah, you it's listen true. back and you're like, "Man, I, I lost that moment of inspiration and now I I can't remember what I was thinking or where I was at yeah, mentally." Was so so you're just, or like right. in, you know, uh, we'll have these voice memos like in the middle of the night and they just sound like little whimpering whispers. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, what yeah. in the world it's was like, I that's singing? That's creepy. Halloween yeah, song. That's weird. weird. I've had that happen before. I, you know, you wake up and like, it's so weird. I, I was at, I love worship at the uh, Toronto airport church like yeah. uh, two years ago. And someone came up and said like that the Lord was going to start waking me in my sleep with melodies. And so I'd wake up in the middle of the night with these song ideas and I'd be like, that's it. Eh, my phone. Yeah, exactly. And then my wife's like, are you crying? <laughs> Are you whip? Is that how my voice? Oh, I was like, is that how my voice sounds? You know, like, so she's not musical. So she, she didn't, she didn't get it. Yeah. She wasn't quite tracking with me there, but <laughs> that's amazing. I do feel like with song ideas, like most of the songs that I've loved, like song ideas, yeah. like then Joel will not like, and then the ones we don't really like, he'll really like, and it's yeah. happened even with producers. Like, on our last album, David Leonard, like one of his favorite songs, we didn't even have on our list. Yeah. It was just like in the thread. And it, like Rain Above It All, like when Ethan brought that idea to us, we were both kind of like, eh, I think it's kind of boring. I don't really <laughs> like it. And then we listened back to her, or I actually led it finally and was like, oh, dang, yeah, this, this is, is a good amazing. song. <laughs> it's funny what you can pass over. It's amazing too how, um, you know, what what you think um, is is a petty offering ends up being right. something that inspires other people and it, it just yeah. goes to show you like no art and no yeah. uh no writing and no time processing is wasted in in that yeah. Yeah. True. Very true. so um as we're as we're talking here we're getting close to uh to christmas what um you know actually first i'm gonna ask you this i would love you guys to come up with your top three christmas songs that are not about jesus not about they cannot Jesus. Be a, they can't be about Jesus. I know this is a little tricky. <laughs> Top three Christmas songs Oof. not about Jesus. That's a good question. I mean, all of Michael Bublé's Christmas That's album. That's very true. I'm a sucker for Michael Bublé. I love all of his Christmas album. It's so good. He's a good Canadian. Is he? Yeah, he's know, a Canadian. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. All the best people from Canada. Totally, totally. Um, no. I mean... Dang, that is hard. Dreaming of a White Christmas. Um, Paul, I thought you were like a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Sync kind of guy, but uh, maybe I'm wrong. In <laughs> Sync, yes, exactly. 98 degrees, uh, anything like that, I'm into. I was going to say thoughts on Mariah Carey's. Oh, yeah. Ah. Classic. That's kind of like, that's like the ultimate Christmas song. I mean, yeah, that's probably number one Christmas album. Then Michael Bublé, all of her songs. Anything, so good. anything from The Grinch, I love. <laughs> yeah. Anything yeah, nice. Alone. I like that. Yes, Home is Alone that, is so nostalgic. Is that the kind of stuff you have playing around your house around yeah, around this time like of year right now? Traditional yeah. Christmas radio, give me all that all the time. Oh, beautiful! I I love that. You know, my my one of my personal favorites was, um, I mean. I love, I mean, I love the Lauren Daigle Christmas record, um, yeah. just because it's like just Paul Mayberry just slaying things and yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and um, but yeah, we've been playing your record across our house and really enjoying that. And so, as we as my family gets ready for Christmas, and we've been listening to your record and tons of other uh, Christmas records that have been coming out, both um, that would be considered uh, Christian. Uh, or not Christian. Right. I don't even know how to describe that. Right. But tell me some of the traditions you guys are looking forward to this Christmas as a family, yep. kids, family, friends. What what do the McClure's get up to around Christmas time? 
Um, <laughs> eating, lots of eating. Lots I feel of like. food. There's a good week there where I just eat Christmas cookies for breakfast yeah. every morning. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing we did did the Christmas recording like before Christmas time in October. Right, exactly. So it then would be chunky. Yeah, the ex- extra pounds you won't see. <laughs> totally. But, yeah. No, we. Um, one of our favorite things to do, we, I mean, we are originally from North Carolina, so many of the years we've traveled home for Christmas, right. but as our kids have gotten older, the last few years we've stayed home and it's been really fun. It's been amazing. Yeah, really sweet. The older they get, we're kind of forming, we're still in the early stages, I think, of forming our traditions. We love to yeah. go sledding on Christmas Eve. Um, mm. We have to drive to snow, though. Yeah. There's no snow in Reading, so yeah, it's like 45 minutes. Drive up to the mountain, go sledding. Um, what other Christmas traditions? We, we make al- Christmas always watch cookies. Home Alone. We watch that's, Home Alone. That's a definite. That's going to happen. We make Christmas cookies and go see lights, Christmas lights. We always do a Christmas breakfast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're. it's interesting. Like, I think of our 12 years married, we've stayed here two years. Mm-hmm. So we're still mm. kind of in the forming stages of what does the McClure family tradition look like? Because normally it's flying all of us for thousands of dollars to the East Coast <laughs> and then yeah. bunking up at her parents or my parents. So we're still forming it. But last year we actually stayed in town and it was so amazing. Yeah. So nice. So relaxing. I mean, one of the weird, I mean, I don't want to say it's a good thing, but like this year, I mean, personally, I'm going, okay, I don't have to do five Christmas services this year. This is like... Yeah. We're gonna like do a pre-tape and like yeah, oh, that's that's amazing. Amazing. And shut her down. <laughs> Seriously, I know it does feel like it's gonna be way more chill this year, which is very nice, very appreciated. We're doing a tree lighting service. That's one of the traditions we really enjoy every year at the church. We do a tree lighting service, and it's kind of gonna look the same. We normally do like an inside portion, and then we move outside to do the tree lighting. So now we'll just do it all outside because that's all that's right. legal here in. <laughs> beautiful california so we'll still do that next week it'll be outside but then other than that it's pretty chill the rest of the year which is awesome i mean the the cool thing about i guess you could look at it either way but i was very excited when i came here that they don't do like a big christmas production because i'm Mm. from from places where we did that so i mean east coast and the south bro it's like I mean, you know, it's like the Christmas cantata play. Just so much sets and so much work. Here it's like, yeah, just do some Christmas songs in your set on Sunday. <laughs> it's like sweet, I like this. And it's usually like the senior pastor's wife who's like, This is her this oh, is her okay. this is time moment. to shine. <laughs> and she like made all the costumes and yeah. Yeah. You got I don't think you have to worry about that there. And I mean, even if you did, it's like, okay, it's going to be Jen Johnson. And right. <laughs> so good. Very, very true. It'll still be pretty cool. good. Yeah. That's <laughs> so funny. Let me, let me ask you this. What is your most controversial uh, Christmas opinion? Like, what is the thing that you're like, this is the worst? I go eggnog is the worst. Mm. That's interesting. And I think Elf is the greatest Christmas movie ever made. Oh, and yeah. I think, I'm with you on that. And I, I think, think uh, a Christmas story is not very funny. Yeah. <laughs> It's I, very true. We agree with all of those. Okay, I'll say I hate White Christmas, which Hannah oh, loves that movie. I'm just like, it's so bad. boring to me. Um, I love White Christmas. I, this, I guess this is not, this is more Thanksgiving, but turkey is like, I guess he, people eat turkey for Christmas too, don't they? Mm-hmm. But turkey's just not yeah. good. It's dry and it's not, I'd rather have anything that else. That is not true. Um, give me a rotisserie chicken. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like give me ham or chicken or steak maybe. Like yeah. why turkey? What else? What Hannah loves everything about Christmas. She's I not, do. She doesn't have any I love it all. I don't love eggnog though. I'm with you on the eggnog. It's too the texture. I don't know. Can't do it. Um, yeah, me either. Not, not, not my, my deal. deal. Yeah. I'm trying to think of something very controversial, and I can't. Th- I mean, there was a spell there where I just didn't like Christmas. You were, but I'm. I kind of come around. He was a Grinch for. You were the Grinch. I was He's the been Grinch converted. for a bit. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have any like great controversial. Oh man. Okay, that's fair though. I mean, you guys are just the average Christmas family, which we would are. Tell me, we just love it. Love all the yeah. which, love all the Christmas. Which Paul did? I'm going to give you this because in football, um, you can bet the over under of you know a score of a game, and it might be 45 points combined or whatever. Um, I want you to pick the over under of hours of Hallmark movies watched by Hannah. Thankfully, she's not. 
that's thankfully a, that's, that's not a deal. One. Yeah. Oh wow, you lucked you oh, lucked bro, out, so man. Lucked out. I think White Christmas is the closest it comes for me. Like her and her mom and her sister will turn that on, and I just I <laughs> get out of there as fast as I can. I love all the old Christmas classics. The old Christmas movies. But yeah, yeah I don't do Hallmark. I can't. It's too. Does cheesy. your wife do Hallmark? Oh my gosh! Oof. Yes. Like I, th- I noticed a credit card. I think we purchased <laughs> the app. Um, it's Roku. Roku decided to come out with an app where you can of just pay. They did. It's bad. It's oh, like man. it's like Lifetime and Hallmark are like right there together, huh? Oh my goodness! I'm like, I need Elf, uh, Christmas Vacation, yeah, Home Alone, every single yeah, it, one and two, Home Alone. Yes, my my kids love three. They think three yeah. is the best Home Alone. <laughs> I'm going. Yeah, our, our son too. loved number three. We're like, you don't, you just don't get it. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I know. I know. You know Home what Alone. movie I love? No. Christmas movie, Family Man, that Hannah hates. I don't. But I I've never seen that. that. Nicholas Cage, T. Oh my T- goodness! T- That's probably why I haven't seen it. It's great, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's why he's I'm the like, worst, yeah. but he's pretty good in this one. Okay, it's um, how old are your kids again? Seven. seven our and boy four. Ezra is seven, and our girl May is four. Okay, so you, you might empathize with this when you throw on Home Alone one, and you're just like, I really hope. He's mm-hmm. like. Daddy, what's a little jerk? Yeah. It's like, oh man. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> at least, at least that's the word you caught. Like, at least that's yeah, exactly. the one we caught there. Okay. You do kind of forget how many like risque things that he yes. says, and you're like, whoa, don't say that, yeah. buddy. Also, after our son watched it for this first time, he was trying to like come up with booby traps, like putting nails up for us to step on and oh, stuff. No. And we're like, oh yeah, buddy, can't do that. <laughs> But I appreciate you guys coming on the podcast right now and uh, talking about Christmas morning because Christmas morning is like literally in, you know, a few days. So yeah. as we close this podcast, um, I'm going to pick the song. I normally let you guys pick, but uh, I just love Heart Sings Hallelujah. Come I think on, it's awesome. Oh, and I was listening you. to it today. It really stuck out. And um, so this is Heart Sings Hallelujah from the McClure's, Paul and Hannah McClure from Redding, California. Right here, overflow beyond the music. Thanks for checking out today's episode of Overflow Beyond the Music. For past episodes and more information about Overflow Ministries Group, visit overflowbtm.com.